Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. May I have my first slide, please? Yes. Um, I was going to talk to you about being connected because that's what Susan of Gain asked me. And uh, that's indeed what you've just said it would be the theme of this afternoon. And then I was sitting here this morning and thought about the first slides that I was going to uh, talk to you about, like these ones, that's my consumer, and talk about how the consumer is changing because she is connected. And then already when I thought of that first slide and I saw the pictures of uh, ladies with undernourished babies in their arms in a village in India or Africa, I thought this was already starting to become inappropriate. But okay, I was going to talk about, yes, she is connected. I was uh, going to talk about what that would mean to her. Uh, and much better what it would mean to you. Um, there's the other figures in my presentation, that's the retailers. Um, I found out that there's no retailers in this session, which I think should be something to, look, to be looked into. And of course, it was interesting to see how you producers are going to be connected and how you are really connected. So that was what I was going to talk about this morning and I was sitting here listening to all of this and I thought, Stupid, not interesting. Um, so I changed my slides considerably in the past few hours and I scribbled something uh, on my iPad. Indeed, I was the one uh, with sitting with the iPad scribbling there. And I would like to share that because being connected is not the point at all, I think, in uh, solving uh, under uh, nutrition or malnutrition or all of that. Uh, so let me take you through some of the slides that I scribbled this morning. Um, the first thing I picked up was that it's all here about nutrition or even better about malnutrition and indeed how we can take that away out of the world. So I think I've understood what you're all about here. Um, I've learned a new term, base of the pyramid. I'm a retail strategy consultant. We don't talk about the base of the pyramid. We talk about people with less income, but we're talking, I think in this forum, uh, a little bit more uh, underneath uh, the uh, income levels that I'm used to in the developed uh, countries. But indeed, I've learned about that as well. Uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, because then you know what I'm coming from. I'm a global retail strategy expert. I work for big retail chains and brand manufacturers. I do that all over the world. And I must say, I don't work in Somalia or other war-stricken uh, countries because that's not where I could uh, do my thing. I need a little bit of development in a country to be able to work. Uh, but indeed, uh, I would like to talk about the base of the pyramid as well. I work for big companies like Rewe, Aholt. Rewe is the mother company of Bila here in, uh, in Austria. Uh, Aholt uh, from Holland, Unilever, Barilla, the spaghetti guys, Micro, which is from Switzerland, which is your uh, home turf of, um, of uh, gain, Heinz Coop and others. Um, but I would like to know and concentrate, uh, would like to concentrate today on what I know best and uh, because that's where I can make the most impact. I thought that was a very good question this morning. Where can you make the most impact? So I was thinking, okay, where can I make the most impact? That's in retail. Um, I can apply my knowledge of retail to help uh, to feed the world. That's what I do. I don't do that out of CSR, new term for me. I heard it, picked it up this morning, what that is. Uh, corporate social responsibility, if I'm right. Um, haven't heard it too much in the companies I work for, and I work in the big uh, uh, companies. Um, it's because of profit. And I think if you can put the carrot of profit before big companies, they start to run much faster than out of CSR. So let's look at that. And um, I do that by helping my clients to earn money. Uh, the one that can sell the most at the lowest prices wins. And the one that can do that at the lowest cost uh, is the double winner. So that's my normal business and I can help a little bit there. So if I'm thinking from that background on malnutrition, and that was what I was scribbling this morning, um, it is about not getting enough and or the right type of food. And I've heard some details about what the not right food would mean, but I think this is uh, more or less right. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, not getting enough or uh, uh, and or the right food, I thought it was about affording. Why does this lady with the baby in the arm and the undernourished baby in the arm, why doesn't she have the right food? In most cases, I would think that she cannot afford it or she 
what somebody told me over lunch, she thinks she cannot afford it. So let's talk about that. So let's talk today about uh, food production and technology. I've heard a lot about that uh, this morning. Um, and I would like to talk about something different. I would like to talk about food retail because I think that you can solve much more and have much more impact by talking about retail for a while. You can have a real big impact by talking about retail. And strange enough, there's no retailer in the forum today. That's what I scribbled this morning too. Uh, so that's the one recommendation I would do to you anyway. Uh, get retailers on this forum as soon as possible because these guys make a real impact. So um, just uh, thinking this morning, um, this is the base product, like let's say wheat, and this is the consumer, and we would like to make this week wheat get into the consumer to make her and her baby stay healthy. So that's the road from A to B. Um, and what we see in many of the countries that we discussed uh, today is that the road from A to B is a very long one, and there's many, many steps involved there. Um, there's maybe a street vendor, there's a local wholesaler, a provincial wholesaler, national wholesaler, an importer, an exporter, well, whatever. There's huge amounts of steps in there. We call that the value chain, of course. Um, but uh, that's where your real problem is. What my business always is, is to start from here and work back along that value chain. Um, what I heard this morning is very much discussions further on the other side of the value chain. Uh, and that's what many participants here come from. Anyway, what I'm after is shortening that chain considerably because I think the faster you can get this into her stomach and that of her baby, the better it is and the more she can afford it. Because each and every step, if I go back here, they want to earn money. That means that it will drive up the price from here to there. And the more you go like that, uh, the more better it is for her and for her baby. I'm not talking about fairy tales because that's the retail structure in most countries that are working in the developed countries. So we need modern retail in these countries. That's the first thing I thought of this morning. The more modern retail you can get into these countries, the better it is for the mother and her child. Even better, we need hard discounters out there. So not just a supermarket or a hypermarket, we need hard discounters. For those of you who are not aware what a hard discount is, think of Aldi or Lidl or Penny and what is called here in Austria, uh, Hofer or the Hofner, uh, something like that. It's hard discounters, very small stores with a very limited amount of products. It could be between 600 to 1,000 SKUs. SKUs is stock keeping units and that's about it. On average, these are 50% lower in price than supermarkets uh, in comparable markets. If you take Aldi and Lidl, that's 50%. EDK, Rebe, they're 100%. I have not made the calculation, but I would guess that if I would compare it to the emerging markets, the comparison would be even starker. That's why I think if we want this mother and her baby to be able to afford the right food, we should look into this because that's where we can make a huge impact. Just to give you an example how that works, to make the calculation simple, I was yesterday in Cologne, in Köln, in Germany, looking at a number of stores, and I counted in an ADK, which is a so-called full-service supermarket, which means a broad assortment supermarket, I counted 22 SKUs of spaghetti. And an SKU, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a stock keeping unit, that's the molecule of a store, that's the individual product. So I've taken these pictures in EDK, and there you are. That's nine types of spaghetti in one store. And it's only spaghetti, I'm not talking about all pastas, because all pastas is 220. No, I'm talking spaghetti only. That's nine, uh, 18, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, anywhere between uh, 49 cents and 6.49 for 500 grams of spaghetti. Well, you can understand that each of those SKUs, each of those uh, spaghetti varieties costs money to distribute it. If I go to Aldi in Köln, 
I count two SKUs of spaghetti. Uh, this is an Aldi. It could feed an African or an Indian village without any fortification or innovation of food very well. So the mother and her child in India would be very well off if that would be in her village. It's very close by to the people. That's the basic idea about a hard disk counter too. So you don't need a car, like with a hypermarket. You don't need to get on the bus in the heat. Uh, it's close by. Um, and what you see there, this is then the pasta department. They have about 10 or 12 SKUs of pasta, opposed to the ADK with 220. And uh, this is then uh, the uh, spaghetti, uh, which is excellent. And the illustrator was, uh, I was showing her the presentation just half an hour ago. And the illustrator from Italy, she said, is it indeed excellent? I don't trust that. I'm from Italy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't I? Yes. <laughs> It is excellent because it comes from almost the same factories as there. And making spaghetti is not very uh, difficult. It's uh, durum wheat and water and a touch of salt and that's spaghetti. So it is uh, it's excellent. Um, and look at the price, 49 cents. Uh, when you, I compare it to the Edeka, the main brand Barilla, it's 149. So it is not half, as I indicated earlier, it's one third of the price. So that's, I think you can follow me, why I believe that bringing in hard discounters to countries that have stepped a little bit on the development ladder would be a very, very good idea. Um, they've got the latest food trends as well. This is what they call full corn or the full grain spaghetti as well. They follow and adapt every innovation very rapidly. So if you food manufacturers invent a new food technology, you can be sure that the moment it becomes viable, these hard discounters will pick it up and bring it into their assortment. So that's what I think. So let me tell you a little bit about the rise and fall of retail formats. Uh, in, uh, this is how it always starts in a country, and I think this is how it is in the countries that we've been talking about this morning. Here you see the different varieties of stores. That's the mom and pop stores. I mean, literally, a mom and pop stores. Mom and pop run a store. Department stores, hypermarkets, hard discounters, convenience stores, no compromise stores, which is uh, low price, high quality uh, supermarkets, and the shopping malls. This is how it normally starts in a country. Lots of moms and pops, web markets, street side vendors, and such. Like these street vendors in Shanghai, or the wet market in Shanghai, or this uh, mom and pop store that we visited recently in, uh, on Java. And uh, in there, low quality, very high price. And before the product has reached this mom and pop store on Java, it has gone through many hands, and each of those hands wanted to earn money on it. These are completely dependent on brands, on the guarantee that the brand gives. And hard discounters, they don't have any brands, it's only own brands. So the consumer doesn't pay for the marketing, they just pay for the product. So in many countries, the balance of power is still like it was in Europe decades ago. This is the uh, giant of the producers, and there's the retailer. It's very small, and that's on intention that it's very small. And what you see is gradually the retailers start to grow. They're getting bigger and bigger. But in the first bit, the producers are still the largest. One little secret I will give you the producers, the brand manufacturers, like the fact that the infrastructure of the retail in developing countries is um, not so great. Why? Because they still earn their money there. The uh, big brand manufacturers don't earn any money in Europe. They do earn it in the developing countries. Uh, so this was the old day. The producers are still the boss. And, well, you see the market has already grown a little bit because in countries like India or Indonesia, there are many... Uh, retailers as big as that, um, but the producers are the boss, they look down on the retailers like that, and the retailer looks up and says, please, Mr. Producer, tell me what to sell. Uh, so what happens then? The first step along the development ladder of the retail infrastructure is the hypermarket. Uh, you can see that now in Indonesia, we've seen it in Mexico, um, it's happened in the Middle East. So the moment the first hypermarket comes, the next week, 20 to 40 moms and pops are dead. Really, the first week they're dead because they're completely cash-driven. They don't have any reserves, no fat on their bones. The next week they're dead. Then the next week, another 20 to 40 die, and that's how they burn away. Hey, somebody else thinks that's a good idea, hypermarket, I start too. They burn off even more moms and pops, and uh, the hypermarkets take over completely. That's a development that we've 
been able to see in France in the 70s and the 80s, and the exact same thing is happening now in like Indonesia, uh, where we've seen that happening too. So they burn it all away. And then last but not least, the department store, the old fashioned department store in the middle of the town is burned away as well. Yeah, we've seen it with Carrefour in Yogyakarta. We've analyzed the market of Yogyakarta. They came in week one, 20 to 40 were away. And that's uh, happening then. What happens then is that the retailers rapidly become much more important than the producers. And that's good news for the consumer. It's bad news for the producers. Uh, but I cannot uh, make the story different. I'm just explaining facts that have happened in Europe, are happening in the United States, and are happening in other countries too. So the whole picture starts to change. The retailer goes bigger than ever. Think of Carrefour, think of Tesco, think of Walmart, think of Aldi, think of Lidl, think of Rewe, all these big ones. And then the picture starts to look like that. Of course, the retailer will make the producer feel even smaller than they are because out of uh, negotiation uh, uh, power, and that's how the retailers look upon themselves. Well, it would be superb for nutrition in emerging markets if it goes this way quickly. There would be very good news there. Um, it is happening now. This is China, Carrefour in, uh, in China. Uh, they are making the retail infrastructure efficient very, very quickly. Uh, this is Suzhou, which is just outside um, Shanghai, and what you see there is people are shopping in the bus or on a scooter, they're becoming affordable, or an electric bike like that. And what you see, there, the uh, social demographic structure of the country is like this. That's the top of the pyramid, many people, and that's the bottom of the pyramid, or how you call it, the base of the pyramid. Um, most people live here. Well, the moment that this middle st uh, bit starts to grow, uh, people start to think of buying a car. So this guy driving there wishes he is this guy um, and uh, driving in a car. And what they do then, uh, they go to the hypermarket, very good. But once that trend is started, uh, you will have a big traffic jam overnight because the roads are not keeping up with that. And it will be a traffic jam day and night. That's already happening in uh, Shanghai. So what you see then is that the hard discounters start to come in. You see that uh, in, uh, in many countries then, uh, discounters on food and on non-food, uh, they will go more and more places. Convenience stores start to come in. Uh, shopping malls start to come in. Uh, no compromise uh, supermarkets start to come in. And before you know, the hypermarkets are gone away. That's happening in Europe at the moment. Real in Germany, in real trouble for years. Carrefour in France, in real trouble. Uh, and that has to do with this kind of development. Um, then the shopping malls uh, start to fight amongst each other. Before the crisis, that was even bigger. And they started to burn each other in a desperate race to be the biggest shopping mall around town. And this is happening in Indonesia, it's happening in, in, uh, in China, in Mexico and all that. So my main message to you is the following. You and Gaines should concentrate much more on rapid modernization of the retail infrastructure. Uh, get hard discounters going and get them in here. Um, get retailers into game and link uh, with the Consumer Goods Forum. I was asked here because I made a big speech at the Consumer Goods Forum in Barcelona. That's the real powerhouse of all the brand manufacturers and the retailers. And I think you should link up with them because there the powerhouses are going. Um, so, efficient modern retail guarantees a massive impact on malnutrition. Um, and if you still want to know about my ideas about the impact of IT on retail banking and on the world, uh, read my new book. It's called Porn for Bankers. Um, this picture was taken on the set of the YouTube movie. Go to YouTube, type in Porn for Bankers, you will see that movie. Um, just as no degradation of women there, this is a friend of my eldest son, and she is studying uh, movie sciences at the University of Amsterdam, and she's playing a very, very good porn actress. Um, <laughs> so go to pornforbankers.com, you see how you can get it there, and I've added a free uh, supplementary bonus chapter, Porn for Supermarkets. It's free on the site, you can take it down there as well. So that's my story. Think retail. Thank you. <laughs> what, oh, I go. <clears throat> what we're talking about, obesity, I think that's the least of their problems to start with. The 
if you go to the 800 or 900 SKUs that they have in a Aldi or in a Lidl, they're just the basic foodstuff products. Uh, yes, indeed, you can overstuff yourself with chocolate if you wish. Uh, but I think let's solve the first problem first and then we'll take the next okay. one. Okay, fine. Well, there's plenty to talk about. And thank you very much um, uh, for that.